So, before I start, it has been, um, it is, I'm so thrilled to have this interview with you. Uh, it's it's really made my week. I've been looking forward to it all week. And, uh, yeah, secondly, um, I watched you in uh, She-Hulk and you were really good in it. I, re- I like the um, the floral, like, necklace you had. Yeah, I really... Ah, that's brilliant, yeah, because I've seen on your Instagram you like flowers, you like taking photos of flowers, so it, that that fitted quite well with you then, didn't it? I thought so too, I, loved, I really liked it, I liked everything they picked. Ah, that's really good to hear then, yeah. So, let's start with question one. How much of yourself did you write into Marla? Do you feel she is like a projection of yourself in a fictional narrative, or do you feel she is more of a broader character meant to represent like any aspiring uh, performer? I would say both. There's definitely elements of my life in there, and I had already worked as an extra by the time I started writing that book at least 50 times, so I had the experience and a lot of the stories in the book, which matches my wall, I guess. Yes. (laughs) A lot of the stories in the book are basically true. I just changed the names of the films. Uh, You know, instead of putting actual films I worked on, I made up films, I made up directors so I could say what I wanted about them and and change it up a little bit. But um, some of the things, um, the movie that's on the train tracks... Yeah, Superhero 9. That was Spider-Man 2. Oh, really? Oh, wow. And it really happened, the whole star thing and everything. Oh, that's... Yeah, oh, wow. That's, yeah. Directed Spider-Man 2? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think so. So, a lot of it is pretty much true, but by changing the names of the movies, I could take the things that happened and sort of just switch it up. Ah, right, that's, yeah, it's that's quite a good win. Uh, it's what's that they say, um, write about what you know, so that's exactly what you've done, so it's, oh, wow. I it, but, you know, some of the bad things, I mean, yes, so there is a lot of me in Marla because it's somewhat based loosely on things that happened to me. I also noticed as Marla's stuck in that job um, that she doesn't want to be and she wants to also be a, a full-time actress. I noticed on your internet movie database you were as an attorney. Is that right? Yeah. Did you have that sort of like a similar sort of connection where you was you you were stuck in that job and wanted to be a performer? Is is that yeah? Yeah, I had a couple of jobs that were great jobs, but they just weren't for me. So I changed that up a little bit too, so I wasn't, say, complaining more than I intended to about a particular company. But some of the things that happened to her at work also sort of happened, or maybe they didn't. Who really knows? Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's brilliant. What's your opinion on extras then? Do they do you feel the industry must treat them? Do you, do they deserve to be recognised as non speaking actors and not just supporting artists? Do you think their role should be credited? No. This is my opinion and my opinion only. Um, but I have now been an extra maybe more than seventy times and I've had I think I'm up to sixty some credits on IMDB for speaking roles. So I've done both enough times and I I do believe that there are, are on occasion featured extras who do do a lot, but mostly extras are called extras for a reason. They're extra. And I don't think the industry necessarily treats them badly, but I definitely think individual productions can and have. Um, I literally, I won't name the show, but there was one uh, network TV show where the holding room where the extras wait until they're taken to set had hanging lights overhead, no toilet paper, no chairs, and the floor under construction. Really? So you're expecting adults who are wearing nice enough clothes, you know, we weren't even playing homeless people to be dirt, you know, pretending to be, um, you know, we were in nice clothes, and you want us to not even have toilet paper or have a place to sit. So. That's, yeah, that's pretty bad. Um yeah. I think the worst essay holding I've been in is just, just simply it was just overcrowded. And that, that was the only problem with it, and that makes it look like a, a palace, you know what I mean, in comparison to what you had to wait in essay holding. Yeah, that's, 
That's really bad. Where it was super cold out and we were not let inside for long periods of time. Oh really? Just you just froze. Just <laughs> ah, is that where the um the uh, ice skating um part of your book? Yeah, is that the inspiration from that? Yeah, there's, there's one I did not put in the uh, book. I, like I said, I've done a lot of times. There was one where um, I was told I was going to be a restaurant diner, so inside in the winter, and so were some of the other people. So some of the women didn't even have snowshoes, you know, snow boots. And the uh, temperature was below zero on the, you know, on a clock outside. And what they really wanted us to do was stand outside all night long. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I... Yeah. So do you, you... But yeah, but, but the point of the book is that how do you handle it when you're treated to feel like an extra when you want to be treated like you're special or you want to feel special? Yeah. I... Do you think that they're actors, though? Because I think at the end of the day, they're not playing themselves. They're playing a fictional character in a story that's not them. And although you don't see their narrative perspective, they're still... Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Or do, do you not... It's absolutely fine if you don't agree, but... Do, yeah. I'm just saying the principal actors, which are people who speak, which I have been many times now, are treated very differently by everyone than extras are. Yeah. And that's really, um, you know, as you know, extras can be treated, I don't want to say like cattle, but they're just sort of herded over here. Well, yeah, you, well, you book this describes some of it as cattle, yeah. Don't, don't, you know, be over there where a principal, they bring you food. I'm not sure if they do that now. I haven't, um, well, that's not true. They do bring you food as a principal, even after COVID. I don't know what they do to extras, you know, anymore. But back in the days before COVID, on occasion, they would literally walk around with trays of food right past the extra spaces and give it to the principals. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So, so it's hard, even though you know you're an extra, it's hard not to feel less than. Yeah. And, you see, um, and I've had this happen to me too now, you know, on, um, on a commercial once it was really cold and there was a person who was just assigned to be in charge of my blanket. Oh, really? Well, yeah, because I was the star yeah. of the commercial, you know. So, um, yeah, and I don't, um, yeah, so that is um, really, you're, how do you not feel special when somebody brings you a blanket every take oh. because it's freezing? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so I can't believe someone's getting paid to hold your blanket, but obviously, yes. Yeah, That's why I wrote My Life is a Star, which yeah. is the scene. I'll tell you what, I saw, I'm looking forward to, you've got the, you've got the back end, the, uh, at the back end of this novel, you've got the start of the next one, I'm, I'm definitely going to buy this My Life Thank is a you. Star, yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading it. Uh, you. You, yeah, as you've said, you've been an extra in over 70 projects, would you ever do any more extra work if you got the opportunity? I might if it was a project I didn't think I could apply for a speaking role or audition for a speaking role for, mm-hmm. or a couple of times I have done it to help out friends that were doing projects and needed extras, but I don't really, um, it is a commitment, and if I say I'm going to work on your film, let's say next Tuesday, but then I get an audition for a speaking part next Tuesday, it's I don't want to be that person who leaves you in the lurch. No. So, um, and it's a no-brainer which one to go for, isn't it? it yeah. yeah. It, try to leave my availability for higher-paying, usually speaking, and more prominent speaking roles because I don't need to be an extra anymore. Again, if there was a certain star in town, I have certain. I think everyone does. Your favorite, whoever your favorite actor is. Yeah. If that person here working on a film, I would want to see if I could just to see them in action because sometimes it really is a good opportunity to see super famous directors like Clint Eastwood or Michael Mann to, to see them in action with the top actors of the day. So that's the other side being an extra. If you're fortunate enough to be in a small scene and really close to the action, you get to learn a lot. Oh, definitely, yeah. You sort of, you, you get to learn the day to day sort of operations and that um i was in a sick comedy and um i was the only extra that was in the scene so the, the actors were talking to me and that so i really i get what you're saying i really yeah that's what you said is perfectly just summed it up here in chicago if you're on a big thing 
you're specifically instructed not to talk to the stars unless they talk to you. Yes, that's right. Well, in the UK, it's the same as well. Yeah, no, it's... It's a small indie project. They don't usually tell you that. But I've even been told, um, not me personally, the group, by like a star's bodyguard came in and told us how to behave and things like that. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's, yeah. <laughs> For everyone pursuing creative girls and dreams is the preface of your novel, and I think that's a very impactful one. That I instantly, I think it hooked me onto your story. That's the, instantly, I just, I just read. You know what I mean, wow! I, it, it straight away. Why do you feel the reader must read this first before the narrative begins? And do you feel this is effective for the overarching message of the story? Do you, do you, do you think it really sort of grounds that into the reader's mind? I do, because any creative endeavor, whether you're a musician, an artist, an actor, um, even a lot of freelancer things that might be a little, I don't want to say less creative, but more, you know, even freelancers, everybody faces rejection. Everybody has to try again and again to get that next gig. And it can be very daunting. It can be very distressing. And it can be very discouraging. And there's a lot of learning curve um, if you don't understand how you should be treated on a set or what a good rate is even for an extra kind or or another kind of part, you know. Yeah, yeah. um, I think, have you noticed, as an actress in comparison to an extra, um... Do you sort of feel it's, is it a lot more easy to get extra work than it is to get acting work? 100%. Because some movies need literally thousands of extras. What movie has thousands, well, there might be, I'm sure there's a couple, you know, um, out there that I can't think of right now, but what movie even has a hundred speaking roles? No, No, definitely not. No, it might be something like, um, you know, the Ten Commandments or one of those huge movies. Yeah, like one of the Bible um, things, yeah. Something like that. But, or, um, but even if they did, how many of those parts would be for my type? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whoever's type, you know, um, just because there's 20 or 30 or 40 parts in a movie, which is a lot already, how many are going to be for what you could fit or what the people in charge see that you could be. So it's so much easier to be an extra. There's so many shows um, that, well, they finished their seasons now, but shows need also, excuse me, my throat is so dry suddenly. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> um, some of the shows here, you can't, if you work on the episode this week, you can't work for the next couple episodes, so they need new faces. So, <laughs> well, yes. It, um, so I was on it in a Netflix series, and I was literally I played two characters in the same day. Um, and but I presume that'll be spanned off di- from different episodes and that. But it's yeah. It, but I've noticed quite a few of the uh, casting uh, calls I get. It says you, you you you've got you've got to be a new face. You can't you can't have been already seen in this production. So. And so sometimes for the Dick Wolf shows that film here, like Chicago Med films here, um, one of the, the bigger Dick Wolf shows that's on NBC, and they're in a hospital. So they need patients, they need nurses, they need doctors, they need administrators. Yeah. And so there's way more of, of them than there are people who get to speak. Yeah. And also, I know this for a fact, on many of the shows, even if you just say two words, like, I'm next... Let's say that's your line, like you're the next, whatever, uh, next in line at a coffee shop or something. I'm next. You have to be approved all the way up the network. It's not just one person who decides. No, it's multiple, so, yeah, multiple different sections, yeah, and I can imagine. Just for a small part like that, much less a lead, you know. Yeah. A big group. Yeah, so it's very hard. First, you even have to get the audition. You don't get to submit yourselves for most by yourself for most speaking roles on the major projects. You need agents. It, yeah, I've applied for a few agencies. Um, not 
<laughs> I'm still waiting. <laughs> still waiting for that call now. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, what was the fast pace? Was the fast paced um, opening of the novel deliberately supposed to reflect the fast paced film and TV industry? So you go from um, in the first four pages, you've got, you've got um, Marla and X talking about parting ways. Then you've got flash forward to Marla selling the house. Then again, flash forward to uh, Marla getting um, getting a call from an extravagant agency and then finally another flash forward um, to her being on the set of uh, Superhero 9 um, it's I if it is I immediately immediately yeah immediately I was like oh this if it is deliberate then it captures that sort of quick fast paced sort of um, turnaround that um, film and TV industry has um, I think you've captured that absolutely perfectly if you have Thank you. I did not. My goal at the time, I see what you're saying and I appreciate that. Thank you. And I did try to keep cutting to things and not stay too long in general because it's not meant to be sort of a slow paced, I guess, literary novel, if you if you will. Um, I wanted things to keep happening, but I wanted to show what Marla's situation was so that the reader would understand why it was important for her to even be an extra at that time. Yeah. The, so you, you added, you've, you've immediately uh, opened the uh, exposition of the character and the backstory. All right, yeah. So. I started just with her automatically becoming an extra. It's sort of like, why, why does anyone care? What is she doing it for? Like, what else is she doing? You know, it's very hard when you write a... A, a book or a, a screenplay, I'm sure too, to know what order and what to keep in and what to take out. Yeah, I've I've wrote uh, myself published a book and yeah, I yeah I was constantly changing structure and and scene cutting and stuff like that and, uh, and plays I've wrote before exactly the same. <laughs> just just um yeah, I'm gonna change that. And then the next day, I look back at it and go. I'm going to put that back where it was. So you've done really, really well to make such a sort of a flowing, as you said, like fast-paced novel and that. It's, it's really, you know what I mean? It's, it's a work of art, I think. It really is. In, 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 ca in capturing, do you know what I mean, the, the image of um, the industry and that. So, uh, yeah, it's... An, um, who's your favourite character? Ah, right, so you, can't, so you can't pick an individual one, then, though. No, really. I mean, I like them all. Uh, all. They all, you know, I tried to have some flaws and some not flaws, and I, you know, some things are more exaggerated than maybe they would be in a real person, but I, I think that's fiction a lot of times, or films, even. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's right. Um, so I'm using it to study the representation of extras, and I, in comparison to Ricky Gervais's HBO sitcom called Extras, and so I think this perfectly captures what it is to be like as an extra. Um, and obviously, you've got the experience of over seventy films to um, yeah. seventy uh, productions. You know, I mean, to have the the internal like idea of what actually goes on, and it's just I was yeah, I was reading it, just so impressed how how exact it is, how how accurate it really is. So, and it's really good to have a representation of, ironically, the extra, the background character, the supporting artist being the lead person, the main character. So it's... Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's, I, I did choose to write, you know, the sequel, My Life as a Star, um, even though I don't know how often it happens where somebody goes from an extra to being a star. Um, I mean, I have starred in a couple short films, but I, would, I do not think of myself as a star by any stretch. So. Well, I hope everything with your career really takes off, and um, so I hope I do see you on the big screen as a star one day. So. This. So one of my short films is going to be playing in June at um, a big movie theater here, so I will be on a big screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. 
because you, you've also produced uh, short films as well. I have done, I have written one short film for myself that I played three roles in, and I also um, was the executive producer of a Zoom web series with Zoom the cast of 17. But that's, that's so far all I have sort of written and produced in the film world. Do you have a, a desire to do more, write, more writing in, in terms of uh, the screen? Or? I might, but as you know, it's hard to get anyone to care. Oh, really? Sure. I mean, even the web series we did, we did it during COVID. Is it the best thing since sliced bread? No. Is it funny and free? I think it is. Are the episodes short? The first one isn't even 20, you know, 10 minutes. Um, there were 17 people in it, and it was during COVID when nothing could, you know, people could Yeah, it does. And it's free on YouTube, and we still don't even have a thousand views after trying to promote it. Really? I, um, may... So if, if I film... You know, either I pay for it myself. I mean, yes, there's a lot of GoFundMe projects and some of them do well, but I don't know. You know, and even when you make it, how do you get anyone to want to watch it? I, I when I was first starting off filmmaking, um, I did short films. I had the same problem as you, but I released a feature length film actually on my channel, and that, that I don't know why it it just it just got uh, fairly popular. Um, it's so. I don't, my suggestion is maybe do a feature film. I think that sort of. It's. it's I know it sounds. It, I only spent a hundred quid on it. Follow up question: Is anything come of that? Um, it's very good to, on sending people my internet movie database, and I've got a couple of people approach me. There was this one. Um, this one person of a week actually. He said, "Oh, um, I've got an idea for um." A, a tennis TV series, a fiction thing that he had. He didn't really have much ideas, but he said, Did do you want to direct it? And I said, Oh, that's have you got anything wrote down for it? And he said he has got ideas but he's not got a full script. He said, Come back to me with the script, I'll give you ideas and stuff like that. But and it's because he's seen the films and that. So I think it's my I don't it might that's just worked for me, making just biting the bullet and making a feature film. And that yeah. that helped. But it, that just worked for me. I don't know if it's worth it. It might be worth a try. It might not be. But it, it was it fun to do it regardless. There's just so much content oh. now. And so much is free. Or available for, you know, $10 a month on, or whatever. On, on net, you know, yeah. for a relatively low amount of money. I just believe and have seen from experience of filmmaker friends how hard it is. Um, you can do well even in film festivals. And nothing comes of it. Ooh. And also, a uh, contest. I entered um, this book in a big uh, manuscript to screen contest, and it won. Oh, wow. And some people who have won the contest with other things, not obviously my book, they got deals out of it. And, uh, you know, writing deals and book de and other deals. And um, I did get one meeting or maybe two or a couple, um, but nothing, you know, not even representation came out of it so really um, you know again like poor Marla yeah <laughs> so hard and it's just like people oh, the door opens and then it closes, it closes yeah so I, I guess um, and that's part of it too is how many doors are you or I or whoever the creative person is how many are you willing to keep trying to open and how do you find the ones that work for you yes it, exactly it's just yeah you there is does it, there's a, um, is there a mean to the end, you know what I mean, is there, is there ever going to be sort of a point where it is just not feasible? Um, Congratulations to you, if, you know, your feature, I'll have to go watch it now. Um, <laughs> it makes people come to you. It, it's, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't even want to, I don't watch it, so I don't watch it, I've never watched it back, because I've just, i just like, oh, I just don't, I just don't watch it back, <laughs> but it's, yeah, if, uh, if you're making um, any more sh short films, or if you know what I mean, let me know, and I'll, I'll happily watch it and I'll review it on. You know what I mean? I'll review it. Or if you need any voice actors for it, I'll do it for free. <laughs> but yeah, I'll at, at the very least just I'll let me know, and I'll, I'll watch out for it, and I'll definitely watch it and recommend it and give my honest opinion on it because it's. I'm um, obviously got. I've got a. 
big interest in your work to the point that I'm studying it, so I may as well see your filmmaking uh, edge as well. So, yes, uh, this has been an absolute privilege. So I don't like to let people work for free, but that's my personal belief. But, uh, because I your time and effort are worth something. Yes, but I do it for fun and it is a favour for you to say th- I'll do it as a right. I'll do it as a favour for you for thank you for the interview. Yes, okay, thank you so yes. much. I will let you know if I uh, continue to write other things and as soon as my short film is called Me, Myself and I, it's very short. As soon as it's done with the film festival it's in, I'm gonna put it on my YouTube channel. That so is absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Soon. I thoroughly look forward to that. Um, I hope it goes off yeah. brilliantly for you. Um, so thank you so much for this interview. You've helped me out an absolute great deal. Get to see your paper. You are, sorry. Will you send me your paper? Or <laughs> yes. I... Yes, yeah, we'll do. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's quite, it'll be quite good for you as an author to see your work in comparison to someone else's as well and what the parallels and differences will be. So... Just someone else. It's Ricky Gervais. <laughs> so, so thank you for even like thinking oh, no. comparable, comparable. No, it's it's been an absolute pleasure reading this book, um, and it's been amazing talking to you. And I hope I wish you the best with your career. Thank you. Thank you so much for your interest and for your time. It's been great talking with you. Yeah, you too.